Did you know that if you are a believer in Jesus Christ, that God has blessed you with a supernatural, beyond you gift that comes from the Holy Spirit, and God has blessed you with that gift so that you might live in community, edify his church, and advance the gospel so that the gospel message of Christ can be taken all around the world. We are different by design. And one of the struggles that we have had with the COVID season is that it has isolated us from each other. And it's important for us to realize that as human beings, we weren't made to live in isolation. We were made to live in community. You and I thrive when we are in community. Good morning, Back Porchers. I am glad that you are here today. And we are going to be in Romans chapter 12 in our Bible. So if you'll go ahead and find your Bible and open it up or turn it on to Romans chapter 12. I can't yet see who's coming on online yet. So they changed like the, the iOS here on my phone and I don't, okay, here we go. I see Diane coming online and I, uh, if, as you come online, I see uh, LaVon coming online. We're glad you're here. So just go ahead if you get a chance to check in and let everybody know that you're here. It's kind of cool that we can do this together in community. But our mantra today is I thrive in community. I thrive in community. And we're going to be looking at Romans chapter 12. So let's begin. Good morning, Lisa. Good to see you. Let's begin with verse 3 of Romans chapter 12. For by the grace given to me, I tell everyone among you not to think of himself more highly than he should think. Instead, think sensibly as God has distributed a measure of faith to each one. So the scriptures teach us that we shouldn't think of ourselves more highly than we should. Now make sure you get the context here because it's not talking about um, your wealth or your success or your strength or your beauty. What it's talking about here is your spiritual gift. So however God has gifted you to serve the church, we should never serve in arrogance. Instead, the scriptures say that we realize that God has distributed a measure or a portion of the faith to each one of us. We are different by design. Yet at the same time, because of this differences, these differences, we come together as a body and we need one another and we thrive in the community. Now let's keep on working here. Verse 4. So verse 4 says, Now, as we have many parts in one body, and all the parts do not have the same function, in the same way, in the same way, we who are many are one body in Christ and individually members of one another. Now, what is Paul talking about here? He is talking about the church. And he says we are many parts that make up the church. I like to say sometimes that we are one church in 500 locations. Wherever you are, the church is going where you are. So we are many parts, but we are one body. And Jesus organized the church. There's only one movement that Jesus ever founded, and that was the local church. This was his cause. This was his mission. This was his instrument to take his message to the ends of the earth. Now, there's something that if you are around church very long, you discover, and that is that the church is imperfect, that uh, the church is made up of imperfect people like me, like you, people that are a work in progress, people that sometimes don't react the way that we should. We don't always think the way that the scriptures teach us to think. And so it's easy to get burned as you live in community. That's part of just being around imperfect people. And it's also easy to think, okay, well, I'm going to abandon the church. And that has actually gotten easier because there's so many different ways to individually take in Christianity that don't involve a, a local church. Yet at the same time, uh, individualistic, isolated Christianity leads to a consumer mentality where rather than thinking about how can I take what God has given me and give to others, we
we start thinking about what's in it for me, what do I want, what do I want, and also realize this, your spiritual growth, and I think one of the reasons why I was blessed that you press play today is because you want to grow spiritually. And your spiritual growth is not an individual sport. It's something that happens in community as you walk through the ups and downs of life with other people. So I have a core belief, I have a core belief that the local church is the hope of the world. Not because of the church per se, but because of the message that the local church stewards. We steward the one message that has the power to change the human heart, the message of the gospel. And because of that, in this world that often seems void of hope, the local church becomes a light. It becomes a, a source of good in a world that is filled with much darkness. And God has called you and he's called me to be a part of this. So verse 6 reminds us that according to the grace given us, we have different gifts. If your gift is prophecy, use it according to the standard of one's faith. Faith. If service in service, if teaching in teaching, if exhortation in exhortation, giving with generosity, leading with diligence, showing mercy with cheerfulness. So what this means is just like we have different personality types, God has often also given us some different spiritual gifts. And right here we have a list of some of the spiritual gifts. If you know your spiritual gift, your dominant spiritual gift or gifts, just go ahead and if, you, if you're willing to share those in the chat and that uh, uh, just keeps, uh, keeps the community going as we talk through this today. But uh, he says some are, are prophets and you're very diligent about these are the standards of the faith. I joke sometimes about, you know, the prophets because they begin their sentence with, thus saith the Lord. They're very diligent about this is what truth is. We need that in the church. Some have the gift of service. Whatever needs to be done, you'll do it. Often behind the scenes, you never complain. You're just willing to serve. Some have the gift of teaching. You enjoy looking at the scriptures, and God has blessed you with a natural ability to take a passage, break it down, and share it in a way that connects with people. You have the spiritual gift of teaching. Maybe your spiritual gift is exhorting, and so God naturally has wired you to encourage people to experience and learn more. Okay, this is what's next, and you're kind of pushing people forward so that they keep growing and you're you're kind of a mix of encouragement and coach. Uh, you know, you encourage people, but you're also coaching them to move to that next step. Maybe your spiritual gift is giving and it's very important to you that ministries are funded and that the resources are there that needs to be there. And so when you give, it just does your heart good. You're, you're a generous person. Perhaps your gift is leadership and you can see the big picture and you can help people and you can help ministries get from A to B. That's a gift from God. Maybe your gift is mercy and your heart just cares for people and you're the one that is willing to get down in the trenches and just live life with people and you just have this heart that beats and loves, beats for love for people. When God gives you a gift, understand this, it's a gift from God. It's a gift from the heavens above, so receive it as such. God has blessed you in this way. How cool is that? And he has given you that gift not to be hoarded, not to implode upon yourself, but God has blessed you with that gift so that he might build up his church and advance his kingdom. And then a third thing about the gifts that you receive from God, they're not for your glory. They're for God's glory. If you're a teacher... It's not about, hey, look at me. It's about, hey, look at God. If you're, a, if you're a, a, a giver, it's not about, hey, look how much I gave. It's about, hey, look at what God is doing through this and, and thinking about how, how much God has blessed me. Community often brings conflict, and we'll talk a little bit more about that in the Bible studies to come, because we're different. And I'm, I'm glad we're different. Uh, I, I thank God I'm not you, <laughs> and you thank God that you're not me. We're, we're different. We have different opinions, different perspectives, different spiritual gifts, and yet we all come together in this quirky, God-visioned thing called church. Uh, don't run from community. As painful as it can be, as hard as it can be, 
don't don't isolate yourself and avoid community. Even if you have to do it online right now, do it online. Because in community and through those relationships, we also experience love, uh, friendship, growth. We expand our thinking. Uh, we need one another. So our mantra today is, I thrive in community. I thrive in community. And so regardless of where you are right now in regards to COVID, be intentional about trying to connect with other people and live in community. Amen? Let's transition a little bit to our prayer time. I bring you some good news today. I got a text this morning from Chuck Montgomery, and he said that, that Amy has had a couple of good days, and that this morning she was able to recall the names of her family and recall where she lives. And so uh, that's a huge step forward whenever you're going through. She had an aneurysm last week, and so we've been praying for Amy during our back porch Bible study time. Please keep praying for her uh, one day at a time. It's, it's going to be a long journey for her, but I thank God that she is making progress. Amen. Uh, and then we also want to pray for the Shirk family, Jerry Shirk, who uh, actually participated in back porch Bible study and music heals a lot uh, over the last few months. He did pass away last weekend, so he is now in heaven with our Lord, uh, and we're going to be having his funeral services out in Longview on Saturday. So please pray for the Shirk and the McBride families that God will grant his peace to them during this time. And then I also want to praise God, my nephew, uh, Braden. Shout out to Braden. Braden was baptized this weekend over in Fort Worth. So I'm just thrilled to death and proud of him for making that decision to be baptized, to receive Christ and be baptized. It's just a cool moment in his life. If you have any prayer requests, any praises, feel free to share them. If they're of more of a personal note, uh, nature, feel free to email me at pastor at murphychurch.com. And remember, if this is helpful to you, uh, please take time to share and let others know so that we can continue to build our sense of community and uh, walk together in his word and in relationship with one another. But let's pause. Let's uh, take a deep breath. And let's pray together this morning. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your goodness, and I, I praise you, Lord, for some of the good news that we've heard today. Our hearts are heavy, Lord, as we recognize that people are hurting in our community today. I pray for Amy as she goes through physical therapy and continues to try to take steps forward. I praise you for these steps that have been taken, but ask that you will continue to give her strength and healing be with Chuck and Danielle and Zane and, and strengthen them and give them wisdom as to know how to minister to her. We pray for Gabrielle. We pray for John. We pray for Rosalyn. We pray for others that are dealing with, for Chris, for others that might be dealing with cancer. We pray, Lord, for healing for the body. Lord, we pray for comfort for the heart. We thank you for Jerry, for his life. I thank you for the encouragement that he was during the COVID season as he walked with us so many days and we thank you for his life, for the impact that he had. And we pray, Lord, for comfort for uh, Christy and Mackenzie and Zach and others that are grieving his death today. Uh, Lord, we praise, praise you for new life, for Braden becoming a believer and being baptized. And we ask, Lord, that your hand might be upon him in the days ahead. And I pray that you will help us, Father, to recognize that we have been blessed and we are different by design. So, Lord, may we not always try to make everybody else exactly like us, but may we take time to hear and listen, to truly listen, to love one another, to appreciate one another, and to walk together, even when it's hard, knowing that in community, that's where we experience love, friendship, growth, and that's where we are a part of the church that you have called to steward the message of hope to all the world. So it's in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you again for joining me for Bible study today. I really hope that you have an incredible day, fantastic day ahead. Enjoy this cooler weather. It's nice out here, and I'm enjoying the rain too. Nothing smells better than a fresh fall rain. So I hope you have a fantastic day. Thank you for joining me, and we will talk to you on Thursday at 10 o'clock. Bye-bye.